Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247 wherein we study finance current affairs. So let's get our studies on track. Today we are going to discuss three topics. Two of them are related to RBI. The first one is about the WMA limit that is set in by the RBI in consultation with the government of India. So what is this WMA? What is the limit of WMA set up by the government along with RBI? Now, the second one is about urban cooperative banks. Now, why is that a news? Because this is news. Hai. This is not new. This regulation or the revised regulatory framework was introduced last year in 2022. But why are we revising it again? We'll study that as well in this. And the third one is about PhonePay. Now, PhonePay has entered, which is a fintech company. PhonePay, which is a fintech company, has now entered the ONDC platform with its new app. Right? So, ONDC platform kya hota hai? We will study about that in this. Okay. So, the first news is about the WMA limit that is set up by the RBI in consultation with the government. Now, what is this WMA and what is the limit that is set up? So, WMA is ways and means advances. So, every year after the budget or in any financial year, the beginning of the financial year, RBI along with the government in consultation with the government sets up the WMA limit. This is the ways and means advances limit. What is ways and means advances? This was introduced in 1997. It is the means with which the government can get temporary loan from RBI. Temporary loan ki jab zarurat hoti hai government ko, it goes to the RBI and asks for a temporary loan. Ab iske ek limit set ki jati hai for the entire financial year as well as for half year. So for the half year, that is the period from April 2023 to September 23, the limit has been set to 1,50,000 crore. Now this is very, very, very important. Phase 1 mein iske aane ke chances bohat zyada hai. So you have to remember the time period. You have to remember the amount. What is the limit? that the government can borrow from the RBI on a temporary basis. That is known as WMA, Ways and Means Advances. Now, this can also be changed in future by the RBI, again, with in consultation with the government, right? And this limit is, you know, set up from time to time. Um, initially, jo hai financial year ke beginning mein hoti hai, and then also half year mein, but it can be changed in the middle as well, right? So what is ways and means advances? Hamare liye pura concept samajhna bahut important hai. Sabse pehle to, we understood the basics. 1997 mein this was introduced and under this, the government can take temporary loan from the RBI. Why does it need temporary loan? When there is mismatch in its revenue and expenditure. So government, it generally earns from tax payment, right? So jo government ke receipt hai, it is mostly Yes, both tax and non-tax receipt. But agar kisi bhi, uh, you know, situation ki wajah se, if there is reduced receipts and expenditure or receipt may there is mismatch, the government is in need of emergency credit or emergency cash or emergency liquidity. Then it goes to the RBI. So RBI, as we all know, is the banker to the government. Hum logo ko sabko RBI ka functions pata hai. We all know the functions of RBI. And one of the most important functions of RBI is to act as a banker to the government. So where will the government go when it needs temporary cash or temporary liquidity? In case there is mismatch in its receipt and expenditure, it will go to the RBI and ask for a temporary cash or tempor temporary loan. Now this loan is available for 90 days. Three months ke liye available hai. That is the tenure of the loan. That is why it is known as temporary loan or temporary facility of availing loan. Ab, the question comes ki koi interest bhi dena padta hoga government ko to the RBI. So yes, the government gives interest and the interest rate is the same as the repo rate. So the interest rate is the same as the repo rate. What is the tenure of this temporary loan? The tenure is three months, that is 90 days. So 90 days ka tenure hai, the government takes temporary loan from the RBI for 90 days under ways and means advances. So it is a temporary loan facility provided by the RBI to the government to meet its expenditure needs. Now, the limit of WMA is decided mutually by both the RBI and the government. The bank and the government of India mutually decides what will be the limit of WMA and 
this year for this financial year FY24, half year ki limit has been decided by the RBI and the government of India that is 1,50,000 crore. Okay. Now this was introduced in 1997. Earlier, what was which are still issued. But it was creating a lot of deficit on the government, right? So government ki borrowing was a lot rahi because of regular, uh, you know, raising of T bills or uh, treasury bills, right? Now the interest rate on overdraft. Now, up two three ke WMAs hai. We have to understand that. Sabse pehle there is special WMA, special WMA. Then we have normal WMA, and then aata hai overdraft. Overdraft ka matlab ham sabko pata hai. When the government is unable to pay back the loan, so if 90 days tak, the government is unable to pay back the loan, it goes to an overdraft limit. Now, overdraft ka matlab, there might be any penal rate that must be charged by the RBI on the government. So we'll understand that. So the normal WMA may there are no collateral involved. However, the rate is the repo rate. So the rate is the repo rate, and there is no collateral involved. In special WMA, the rate is less than the repo rate. However, there is collateral involved. So there is collateral involved. The rate rep is repo se kam hota hai. So that is why it is special WMA. And once these collateral are exhausted by the government, it can move to normal WMA. Ab is pe interest zada dena padega. Now, if the government is unable to pay the cash or the loan, unable to repay the loan, after 90 days, the overdraft limit pe chala jayega and the rate here is repo plus 2%. That is a penal rate overdraft. Ke liye. So, sabko, I think sabko samaj aagya hoga, I hope. Special WMA, wherein collateral is involved, the government places a collateral with the RBI. The rate at special WMA is less than the repo rate. Isi liye isko special bola gaya hai, because it is less than the repo rate. Then, after breaching this special WMA limit, the bank, the government goes to the normal WMA. Normal WMA, there is no collateral involved. However, the rate is repo rate. And after that, uh, it goes to the overdraft limit. And overdraft pay, the rate is repo plus 2%. That is the penal rate. Right? So, the interest rate on overdraft would be 2% more than the repo rate. And normal, may, it is only repo rate. And the tenure is 3 months. Okay. Now, this is the interest on SDF. SDF is special drawing facility which is the special WMA then WMA and OD so SDF that is special drawing facility special drawing facility uska jo limit uh, jo rate hai that is repo minus 2% in case it is against it is availed against net increment investment of CSF and GRF these are funds uh, this is consolidated singing fund and this is also a fund that is maintained uh, by the government, yes, by the state governments. So, this is state governments. Ka hai. State governments have to maintain these funds and iske basis pe hi, jo hai, uh, this is one of the basis on which uh, investment, uh, the loan is given to the state government. So, this is the rates that is less than the repo rate. Then, normal WMMA, it is repo rate and OD mein, overdraft may. Now, overdraft, it is if it is availed up to 100% of the WMA limit. But, the WMA limit thi, Uska 100% hi if overdraft is there, which is which means that no repayment has been made. No repayment has been made at that point, it will be plus 2%, that is the overdraft limit. Or agar 100% se zyada hota hai, the overdraft, then it will be repo rate plus 5%. This is for the state governments, right? So this interest rate provisions are for state governments. Now types of WMA humne samaj liye hai. There are two types of WMA. Uh, first one is normal and then special and then we go to overdraft limit. Under special WMA or it is also known as special drawing facility SDF. It is provided against the collateral uh, that is held by the government, government, held by the states and the collateral is government securities. We will move forward. And the interest rate of SDF is generally 1% less than the repo rate. Now, now, WMA for state or UTs, ye bhi samaj lete hai. on what basis is the limit decided by the RBI for the WMA that it has to give to various states and UTs? So, her state or UT ke liye alag -alag WMA limit uh, recognized by the RBI. 
Now, this limit that is decided for various states and UTs, it is on the basis of, it is linked to the quantum of investments that they have in the government securities. So, government of India ki jo securities, if the, the, the state government is holding, jitni bhi securities of government of India are held by the state government, uske basis pe, the quantum of that is linked to the SDF that is supposed to be availed by the states, right? So, SDF uh, jo limit hai, that is special drawing facility ki limit, jo WMA ki limit hai, it is set up by the RBI to various states, sub-states ki alag alag nikalti hai. And what is it linked to? It is linked to the investment that is made by various state governments in government of India ki marketable securities. Jitne unke paas, uh, you know, uh, treasury bills honge, or jitni securities hongi, government of India ki securities hongi, on that basis, the limit is set up. Now, similarly, overdraft. Overdraft kitne period ke liye hota hai? For the state government, it is for 14 consecutive days. And a quarter mein only 36 days ke liye. So, the maximum number of days for which a state, you know, can be in overdraft limit is 36 days in a quarter. 36 days in a quarter and generally 14 consecutive days. Now, if the overdraft exceeds the 100% limit, for five consecutive days, agar first time ho raha hai financial year mein, then RBI, you know, brings down the OD level within 100%. It advises. So, it advises the states to bring down the overdraft limit. However, if it keeps happening, then the RBI takes action, right? So, for the first time, RBI just advises the government, or the state governments to bring down their overdraft limit, right? Or to not exceed this 100% uh, overdraft limit, right? And after that, if it continues, then RBI takes action. Now, what is the significance of this WMA? Why does any state or the government of India goes for WMA or ways and means advances? A basic to humne samaj liya, in case of temporary cash requirement, temporary liquidity requirement, or temporary mismatch between the revenue generation and the expenditure that is made, that is supposed to be paid by the government. Agar usme mismatch hota hai, then there is need of temporary cash. Now, there are other significant, uh, you know, importances of that. The first one is, agar kabhi koi aisa unpredictable situation hoti hai. For example, during the pandemic, during the pandemic, the tax receipts of the government reduced, right? A lot of people were unable to pay taxes and also the government had to give a lot of levies to various, uh, you know, uh, taxpayers, right? So, taxpayers ko leave, uh, Deni padi, subsidies deni padi, government of India ko. That's why there was a mismatch in the tax receipts and also the expenditure that is supposed to be made. So, us cheez ke liye, us mein, us time period pe, uh, WMA limit was used highly by a lot of states and as well as the government of India. So, agar koi aisi situation hoti hai, any unpredictable situation, uh, in such a situation, it is important that the government can rely on its bank, that is RBI, right? And so, the, the benefit of this is also that this WMA facility is cheaper than raising money from the market or going outside to raise money. So, public se raise karne se better, aap apne bank se hi ek loan le lo temporarily. So, because it is cheaper than borrowing from market, that is why it is more important and beneficial for the government. So, the second news today is about revised regulatory framework that is for urban cooperative banks. So, this is the uh, this revised regulatory framework is not new. This was brought out last year in 2022, right? And we have already discussed this earlier. Do thing bar hum isko already discussed kar chuke hai. Then why are we studying it again? The reason we are doing it again or we are revising it again is because these this regulatory framework is now applicable from 1st April 2023. So, as per RBI's new master circular or uh, the master direction of RBI, then this is the new one and the revised regulatory framework to pehle decide hua tha, will now be applicable for this financial year. So, ek baar hum revise kar lete hai, what was this, uh, the regulatory framework that was changed last time, last year and finally, ab ye applicable hoga from this financial year. Now, it is very important to learn such things or such regulatory framework because, you know, as RBI grade B officers, we are going to work towards regulation of various banks, right? Various sectors of banks. So, it's very important to the regulatory framework ko se samajna. and what are the changes that are brought, right? So, phase 2 may be very relevant. Hai. Iski a question will definitely be asked in both phase 1 and phase 2. Phase 1 may general questions aa sakte hai related to UCBs, urban cooperative banks and phase 2 may detail oriented questions can be asked. Okay. 
Now, ये हमको ऑलरेडी पता है दैट अंडर दिस फ्रेमवर्क यूसीबी वर कैटेगराइज इन टू फोर टीयर्स तो फोर टीयर्स में यूसीबी को कैटेगराइज करा था ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट डिपोजिट बिकॉज अर्लियर देर द डिपोजिट वर यू नो फ्रॉम स्प्रेड अक्रॉस ऑल लेवल्स तो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट साइजेस के अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंक थे एंड फॉर फॉर द यू नो फॉर द रेगुलेटर द आरबीआई इट वॉज डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रिंग इन न्यू स्टैट्यूटरी नॉर्म्स फॉर डिफरेंट डिपोजिट साइज और डिपॉजिट साइज ऑफ यूसीबी तो अगर किसी एक यूसीबी पर्टिकुलर यूसीबी के लिए डिफरेंट स्टैट्यूटरी नॉर्म इज सपोज टू बी ब्रॉट आउट फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेटवर्थ का नॉर्म है और सी आर ए आर का नॉर्म है सो दिस विल बी दिस वॉज सपोज टू बी इधर ब्लैंकेट अप्रूवल उनको सबको मिलना था और अब क्या होगा टीयर वाइज मिलेगा राइट सो रेगुलेशन हैज नाउ बिकम ईजी बिकॉज दीज यूसीबी आर कैटेगराइज इन टू वेरियस टीयर्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर डिपॉजिट साइज ओके सो The UCBs have been categorized into four tiers now. In first year, the UCBs that have deposit size of hundred crore, right? Now, in this, all unit UCBs will be there, and salary earners UCBs will be there. Now, deposit size up to hundred crore, that is the base. Hundred crore up to hundred crore, all UCBs will be in uh, tier one. In tier two, UCBs with deposit size of hundred crore to one thousand crore. You have to remember. दिस अमाउंट ऑफ टीयर वन टीयर टू सबका अमाउंट आपको याद रखना पड़ेगा दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट कैन बी आस्ट इन योर एग्जाम ना यूसीबीज विद इम्पोर्ट विद डिपोजिट मोर देन वन थाउजेंड क्रोर एंड अप टू टेन थाउजेंड क्रोर एंड टीयर फोर में विद डिपोजिट मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड क्रोर राइट सो ये फोर टीयर स्ट्रक्चर आपको ऑलरेडी बहुत बार एक्सप्लेन करा जा चुका है यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द अमाउंट नाउ The guidelines that are going to be applicable from this financial year relates to the guidelines that were brought out for net worth and capital adequacy. So, we have four tier UCB. Now, what is the net worth that is supposed to be maintained by UCBs of tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four? How much net worth is maintained? And what will be the capital adequacy ratio? Now, now these deposits. How are these deposits? ये डिपॉजिट्स का पता कैसे चलेगा ना व्हाट ऑन व्हाट बेसिस विल दीज डिपॉजिट्स बी कैलकुलेटेड नाउ इट इज सपोज्ड टू बी रेकन एज पर द लास्ट ऑडिटेड ऑफ लास्ट ऑडिटेड बैलेंस शीट ऑफ द प्रीवियस फाइनेंशियल ईयर सो अब करंट फाइनेंशियल ईयर 23 24 है सो द प्रीवियस फाइनेंशियल ईयर विल बी 22 23 द प्रीवियस फाइनेंशियल ईयर 22 23 सो लास्ट ऑडिटेड बैलेंस शीट के बेसिस पे दिस डिपॉजिट साइड will be calculated and it will be applicable on the basis of that deposit size now if a ucb transits to a higher tier on account of increase in the deposits agar kisi ucb ka uh, deposit size increase ho jata hai let's suppose if a ucb is in tier 2 and the deposit size increases and they are supposed to be now shifted to tier 3 that will be done in a phased manner in a gliding path mechanism so this will be provided There will be a glided path provided of up to three years. Three years का time period मिलेगा to shift or to adjust to various statutory norms. For example, CRAR maintain कितना करना है and other net worth कितनी maintain करनी है. So such regulatory requirements or statutory norms that have to be maintained or followed by any UCBs in case they are changing their tier because of increase in the deposit size. उसके लिए they will be getting a maximum of three years. to comply with various regulatory requirements i hope ye do points aapko samajh aa gaye honge on the basis of last audited balance sheet of the previous financial year that is the financial year that is ended uske basis pe jo bhi deposit size hoga according to that on four in four tiers mein ucb isko categorize kara jayega further if any ucb is going to you know transfer to from one tier to another tier in case their deposit size increases they will get 3 years ka time period a maximum of 3 years will be given to them to comply with various regulatory requirements jo unki increased regulatory requirements hongi okay now the net worth that is supposed to be maintained net worth that is supposed to be maintained under various tiers by these ucbs is tier 1 mein tier 1 operating in single district shall have a minimum net worth of 2 crore so tier 1 ucbs operating in a single district will have net worth of 2 crore an important amount you have to remember this all other ucbs of all other tiers so tier 1 mein with ucbs operating in a single district jo bhi aise ucbs hain they are operating in one single district for them it will be 2 crore the net worth that is supposed to be maintained and baki sare ucbs ke liye the net worth is 
टू और फाइव करोर शाल अचीव द मिनिमम नेटवर्थ ऑफ टू और फाइव करोर एज एप्लीकेबल इन फेस्ड मैनर फाइव करोर द नेटवर्थ इज सपोज टू बी फाइव करोर राइट और जो भी है इनके लिए टू करोर है राइट इन टीयर वन यूसीबी ऑपरेटिंग इन सिंगल डिस्ट्रिक्ट द नेटवर्थ इज टू करोर एंड फॉर ऑल टीयर यूसीबी इट इज फाइव करोर एंड दिस टू करोर एंड फाइव करोर दे हैव टू मेंटेन इन फेस्ड मैनर ओके नाउ अब फेज मैनर में कैसे होगा फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस should be done before march 31 2026 50% should be maintained before march 31 2026 and the entire minimum net worth before march 31 2028 so agar kisi ucb ko if there is a ucb working in tier 1 and it is operating in just a single district and it has to maintain 2 crore so up until 2026 march 31 2026 it has to maintain at least 1 crore and further should increase its net worth to 2 crore till march 31 2028 i hope itna samajh aa gaya hoga so net worth ki requirement dekh li tier 1 mein uh, various tiers mein kaise bifurcate kara gaya hai ucbs ko on the basis of their deposit size we've also seen that now computation of net worth thoda sa dekh lete hain net worth is basically nothing but paid up share capital aur jo bhi kuch reserves hote hain right reserves and surplus that are maintained by the banks ucbs उसपे उससे उसके बेसिस पे कंप्यूट होती है नेटवर्थ सो इट इंक्लूड्स द पेड अप शेयर कैपिटल फ्रॉम रेगुलर मेंबर्स हैविंग वोटिंग पावर सो पेड अप शेयर कैपिटल दैट इज द शेयर कैपिटल दैट इज पेड अप अंटिल दैट डेट एंड इट इंक्लूड्स नॉन परपेटुअल परपेटुअल नॉन क्यूमुलेटिव प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स दीस आर प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स नॉट इक्विटी शेयर्स दे आर परपेटुअल व्हिच मींस दे डू नॉट हैव अ फिक्स्ड रिडेम्पशन डेट नॉन क्यूमुलेटिव मींस if in any year the dividend has not been paid the these preference shares can let go of the amount of that dividend right that is non cumulative so agar kisi year mein dividend nahi mila hai the preference shares holders can let go this amount so this is perpetual non cumulative preference shares uske ilawa if there is any contribution from any associate member jo ki by law permit karte hain then any admission fee that is collected ab usko ek special रिजर्व अकाउंट में मेंटेन करना है सो पेड अप शेयर कैपिटल प्लस रिजर्व दैट आर सपोज टू बी मेंटेन एंड परपेटुअल नॉन क्यूमुलेटिव प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स दैट आर टू बी मेंटेन फ्री रिजर्व फ्री रिजर्व अब इसमें कुछ रिजर्व नहीं है दैट इज एक्सक्लूडेड दैट इज रीवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व सो फ्री रिजर्व आर सपोज टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन नेटवर्क हाउ एवर रीवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व आर एक्सक्लूडेड वॉट इज दिस रीवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व इन केस कोई ऐसी प्रॉपर्टी होती है किसी भी कंपनी की या इन दिस केस इन यूसीबी की so if there is any property jiski value mein change aaya hai so there is it is revalued right in any financial year it is revalued that you know a positive or negative amount will go in the revaluation reserve right then investment fluctuation reserves jo bhi investments hai that is agar koi realized gain hua hai any investment mein any investment that that was available for sale और हेल्प फॉर ट्रेड कोई ऐसी इन्वेस्टमेंट थी जिसको सेल करना था और इट वाज हेल्प फॉर ट्रेड अब इसकी सेल पे इफ देयर इज एनी रियलाइज गेन दैट विल आल्सो बी इंक्लूडेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्लक्चुएशन रिजर्व और पीएनएल का क्रेडिट बैलेंस ऐड हो जाता है एंड डेबिट बैलेंस डिडक्ट हो जाता है ओके नाउ अब हमने देख लिया व्हाट इज द नेटवर्क दैट इज सपोज्ड टू बी मेंटेन कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ नेटवर्क नाउ सीआरआर अब रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क में ही है यूसीबीज का नेटवर्थ एंड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी दैट इज सपोज टू बी मेंटेन राइट सो टीयर वन में इन टीयर वन यूसीबीज हैव टू मेंटेन अ सीआरआर रेशियो ऑफ नाइन परसेंट यू एंड फ्रॉम टीयर टू टू टीयर फोर यूसीबीज हैव टू मेंटेन द सीआरआर ऑफ ट्वेल्व परसेंट तो टीयर वन में नाइन परसेंट टीयर टू में ट्वेल्व परसेंट इंपॉर्टेंट है प्लीज ये याद रखिएगा दिस कैन बी आर सीनियर एग्जाम फेज वन फेज टू दोनों में ही पूछ सकते हैं नाउ UCBs in tier two to three, which do not currently meet the re revised CRA of twelve percent, because before nine percent he was set. As per Basel norms, nine percent he set. Now this is twelve percent. And if there is any UCB that is not currently meeting this requirement of twelve percent, will have the you know a particular amount of time that will be given to them. So in a phased manner, they have to comply with this revised CRA of twelve percent. So they have to achieve the cra of 12% in a phased manner what is this phased manner 10% by 2024 11% by 2025 and 12% by 2026 right okay ab crr dekh lete hain kya hota hai uh, because ye jo revised regulatory framework hai this 
is all about net worth and capital adequacy ratio that is supposed to be maintained by various UCBs based on their the tier that they are falling in. Now, so uh, as per Basel norms, the CRAR ratio hai, that is supposed to be maintained at 9%, right? This was as per Basel norms. Now, 12% for tier 2 to tier 4 is supposed to be maintained. Ye hum ab tak dekh chuke hai. Now, what is CRAR? Capital adequacy ratio that is eligible total capital, which includes both tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital. So, the total eligible capital that is tier 1, tier 2, we will detail in detail what tier 1 capital is and what is tier 2. Mein kya aata hai. It is divided by the total risk weighted assets. So, whatever assets are banks ke, on the basis of various risks that they carry. So, all assets carry certain risks. Now, on risk weighted assets, ke basis pe, jitne bhi risky assets hai, or the total risk weighted assets, unke upar certain capital is supposed to be maintained and the ratio should be 9% and 12% for various UCBs. Now, let's see what is tier 1 and tier 2. Mein kya -kya hai. Now, tier 1 capital. It includes paid up share capital. Yes, paid up share capital from regular members having vote, voting uh, rights. So, paid up share capital include hogi tier 1. Mein. Contributions received. This is a little bit like the networks that we studied. Contribution received from associate nominal members as per bylaws. Contribution which are received, for example, any admission fee that is received. Now, it is put in reserves. Mein dala gaya. And these are non-refundable. So, any other contribution or non-refundable admission fees, which are reserves, mein dala gaya hai, that will be included in tier 1. Now, non-perpetual, non-cumulative preference shares are supposed to be included in tier 1. Free reserves as per audited accounts. Capital reserves representing surplus arising out of sale proceeds of asset. If someone has sold an asset, kara hai, jiski se capital hua hai, that will be in capital reserves. Capital gain. Hua. Okay, so the surplus arising out of sale of uh, proceeds of asset, it will be going in capital reserves. Again, perpetual debt instruments. Koi bhi debt instruments jin ki koi fixed redem uh, redemption date nahi hai, these are perpetual. And any surplus in the PNL account that is supposed to be there in tier 1 capital. Now, tier 2 capital may revaluation reserve hoga and iske lava kuch aur reserves honge. For example, general provision and loss reserve investment fluctuation reserve and kuch tier 2 capital instruments. Now, what is this general provision and loss reserve? So, if there is, you know, expectation of any loss, agar koi asset nahi aata hai ya koi loss ho jata hai kisi asset pe, then that is supposed to be added in loss reserve. So, the provisions that are maintained by any bank or any company, so they maintain provisions, provisions for uncertain or unexpected losses that they might you know, have in future. So, uske liye ek kuch provision banaya jata hai, loss reserves maintain kare jate hai. These are supposed to be added in tier 2 capital. These would include such provisions of general nature appearing in the books of the bank, which are not attributed to any identified potential losses. Okay. Now, investment fluctuation reserves. There are investments that are maintained by the bank. Koi aise investment hai that is available for sale or held for trade. So, available for sale and held for trade investments may if there is any realized gains on the sale of that investment, it will go to investment fluctuation reserves. So, the realized gains arising from the sale of investments held in AFS and HFT can be reckoned as tier 2 capital. Net profit from the realized gains. Okay. Now, tier 2 capital instruments mein kya kya hai? These are perpetual cumulative preference shares. Waha humne padhe the perpetual non-cumulative preference shares. Redeemable non-cumulative preference shares. Now, these are not perpetual, these are redeemable. Then, redeemable cumulative preference shares. Okay. Uh, yes, which comply with regulatory requirements. So, we have perpetual cumulative. Perpetual ka matlab humne samaj liya. Cumulative ka matlab bhi humne samaj ke liya. Wherein the, de uh, the dividend, which is unpaid for any previous year, is supposed to be paid now. So, cumulate hota raega dividend until it's not paid. So, perpetual cumulative preference shares redeemable when they have any fixed redemption date that is they are not perpetual redeemable non-cumulative preference shares and redeemable cumulative preference shares are added in tier 2 iske ilawa there is a revaluation reserve that is added in tier 2 now, what is this revaluation reserve if there is any change in any carrying amount of bank's property so agar kisi bhi company ki koi property hoti hai and there is any change in the value of the property aapne valuation nikalwai us property ki and us property Ki valuation may change. Aa gaya, right? So, now change ko aap kahan that will be in 
रिवेल्युएशन रिजर्व दैट इज सपोज टू बी मेंटेन अब उसमें कुछ कंडीशन फॉलो करनी होती है फॉर एग्जाम्पल जो प्रॉपर्टी की वैल्यू है दिस should be the bank should be able to sell the property readily on its own and us pe koi legal argument nahi hai and there is no legal impediment involved similarly aisi kuch conditions hai ki jo bhi property hai uski valuation easily nikal jaye uh, so for example yes the valuation is obtained from two different valuers at least once in every 3 years sirf ek hi valuer se nahi two different valuer se nikalwai jati right okay the revaluation reserves are presented and disclosed separately in the reserve fund to reserve fund ki category mein revaluation reserves aate hain in the balance sheet revaluation are realistic in accordance with applicable accounting standards the revaluation to reserve hai accounting standards ke hisab se bana gaya hai in accordance with the applicable accounting standards valuations are obtained from two independent valuers where the value of property has been substantially impaired by any event These are to be immediately revalued. अगर कोई impairment होती है property में अगर उसकी value change होती है किसी किसी भी वजह से then it has to be immediately revalued and factored in the capital adequacy computations. Okay. Now external auditors of the bank have not expressed any qualified opinion. दो तीन तरीके के opinion होते हैं that the auditors are supposed to give on any asset. और द बैलेंस शीट और द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और इवन द बैंक राइट तो अगर उन्होंने कोई क्वालिफाइड ओपिनियन दिया है दिस इन दिस केस इट शुड यू नो इट इज नॉट फॉलोइंग द कंडीशन फॉर कमिंग इन रिवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व तो कोई भी एक्सटर्नल ऑडिटर ने कोई ऐसा क्वालिफाइड ओपिनियन नहीं दिया होना चाहिए व्हेन इट कम्स टू रिवैल्यूएशन ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी ओके नाउ दीस आर वेरी टेक्निकल यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल ऑफ दीस जस्ट रिमेंबर रिवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व इज देयर इन Tier two capital. ये सब बहुत detail oriented हैं. These are for chartered accountants to understand. Okay. Yes. Now we have understand net worth requirement क्या है. Deposits के basis पे कैसे uh, uh, discriminate किया गया है. Or you know on the basis of deposits, how are they classified into various categories? And capital adequacy ratio क्या maintain करनी पड़े पड़ेगी on these UCPs. Okay. Now the third news today is about phone pay. Now phone pay has entered an e-commerce platform. With its new app, एक नई app launch करी है the fintech company Phone Pay ने and with that it is entering the ONDC platform. What is this ONDC platform? So this came last year and it is very 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 important for any exam you are giving. Not just RBI, कोई भी आप exam दे रहे हैं this is very important. एक बहुत बड़ा role play करेगा in the e-commerce sector. This was brought out by the government last year. This open network digital commerce. Okay. So the fintech major phone pay has come up with a new app with which it's entering with which it's entering the open network digital commerce platform now this app is called pin code currently it is available for customers in bengaluru and will be launched with other cities very soon now what is this open network digital commerce ondc platform so abhi tak kya hota tha if anybody had to buy anything they had to be registered as a buyer on that particular platform so for example if i have to purchase something if i have to purchase a mobile phone and i want to buy it from amazon then i'll have to register on amazon to buy it. and similarly if there's a seller who wants to sell something on amazon they'll have to register themselves as a seller on amazon right this means it is a platform centric model which means aapko ek platform pe register hona padega as a buyer or as a seller which means it is a platform centric model so the government wanted to move from a platform centric model to an open ended model right an open ended model jisme it is freely accessible to all the buyers and seller to agar aap kisi bhi platform pe registered ho you can easily buy from anybody who is registered in any other platform kyunki open network create ho gaya now ONDC is a freely accessible government black platform which aims to democratize the commerce by e-commerce by moving from platform centric model to an open network for buying of selling of goods and securities so initially ab pehle se pehle jab aapko ek platform pe register hona padta tha as a buyer or as a seller now you'll be able to do that on an open network so everybody can sell or buy from anybody right and to democratize the e-commerce platform what does it mean to democratize the e-commerce platform which means that everyone even the small owners of small kiran kirana shop owners should be able to participate in the e-commerce platform right so under ondc it is envisaged that a buyer registered on one particular e-commerce site for example amazon may purchase goods from a seller on another participating e-commerce site 
Yes. So if you have registered on one side, you can buy from any participant who's registered as a seller on the other side. Because it's an open network, a platform centric network. Nahi. Right? Now, it is a non profit organization which will work to offer a network. To enable local digital local digital commerce stores across industries to be discovered and engaged by an any network enabled applications. The open network concept extends beyond the retail sector or may other services be include hongi. So for example, wholesale, mobility, food delivery, sirf retail e-commerce sector nahi or bhi sectors available hongi is ONDC platform pe going forward. So for example, food delivery, logistics, travel, urban services or various other services will be included in this ONCD platform, ONDC. It is neither an aggregator application, ye koi application nahi hai, it is a commerce or any existing digital app, uh, commerce application. So ye koi app nahi hai, it is a network, an open network jaha pe koi bhi kisi se bhi buy and sell kar sakta hai. Platforms such as e-commerce platforms can voluntarily choose to adapt or be a part of the ONDC network. So for example, this time phone pay has chosen to come up to the ONDC network. Aise hi Amazon ne bhi register kala hai ONDC network pe. So that it can, you know, uh, include all the small uh, merchant, merchants and all the small Kirana storeholders as well. That they should be also able to sell on their open platform without registering on that one particular platform, right? ONDC is expected to digitize the entire value chain system, standardize operations, promote inclusion of suppliers and drive efficiency in logistics. So now, earlier there was a platform centric model where you have to register for any service an app. Pe register karna padta hai. Similarly, if you want to sell service, right, you have to register on any app. Now, what the government is shifting towards is an open network model. Jahape, you do not have, it is an, yes, open API, application programming interface. It is an open network wherein anybody can buy and sell from anyone else who's registered maybe on any other platform, right? Okay, yes, so this brings us to the end of the session. Aaj humne teen bohut important uh, news padhe hai and kisi se bhi koi bhi question aa sakta hai. All of these are very important for your exam. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded our app, you can, it is available. Also, uh, a little piece of information for GA Current Affairs, we have Spotlight available for you. We have Spotlight available for you. It is also available on the app. It is also available on our website. So for the month of March, you can download the Spotlight now. Now, let's come to the questions. What is the recently decided amount of borrowing to be made by the government of India for H1? That is first half of financial year 24. This should be FY24, not 23. I'll make the correction, right? For first half of FY22, A is the correct answer here. Which of the following statement is are incorrect about ways and means advances? Here you have to find out the incorrect statement. There are three types of WMA available. That is short term, medium term, long term. This is incorrect statement. Under special WMA, collateral is kept by the RBI. This is correct. Normal WMA is charged at 2% more than the repo rate. This is incorrect. It is overdraft that is charged at more than the repo rate. Which of the following statement is are incorrect about WMA? Under normal WMA, an overdraft limit is not available. This is incorrect. Overdraft limit is available in normal WMA. Now, an overdraft in overdraft facility of WMA, a rate of 2% more than the repo is charged, this is correct. Under WMA, the government can avail temporary loan for 90 days. Classic definition of WMA. So these two statements are correct. First one is incorrect. Which of the following statements are correct about ONDC? It is an open network platform for e-commerce. Correct. Under ONDC, the government is aiming to move from open model to a platform centric model. No, it is opposite. From a platform centric model to now an open model. ONDC platform might make it difficult for small merchants and Kirana store owners to join due to its detachment from e-commerce platform. No, this is actually an incorrect statement. Which of the following statement is are correct about urban cooperative bank statutory norms? The CRAR that is supposed to be maintained by UCBs in tier 1 is 9%. This is correct. Tier 3 include UCBs with deposits more than 100 and up to 1000 crore. No, this is actually tier 2. In tier 1, in tier 3, we have more than 1000 crore and less than 10,000 crore. So, this is tier 2. This is incorrect. Tier 1 UCBs operate, operating in a single district shall have minimum net worth of 2 crore. This is correct. 
Okay. Yes. So this was the last question of today. This brings us to the end of the session. I hope you liked it. Thank you.